Welcome to the Yellow Brick Therapy Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Helms, and in this podcast, I had the pleasure of being able to talk with Sarah from Waterfall Yoga. Um, she also works out of Soma Recovery as well, but I definitely wanted to shout out to her um, her own brand, Waterfall Yoga LLC, which you can find on Facebook at Waterfall Yoga LLC. And Sarah is a yoga therapist, which when I first heard the term, I had no idea what that meant. Um, But she is a registered yoga teacher as well and yoga therapist. She works with yoga nidra, chair yoga, mommy baby yoga, vinyasa, alignment oriented yoga, gentle yoga, PTSD and traumatic brain injury um, yoga. And and yoga therapy actually works with so many different um, parts of humans and people. So it it helps people work with the trauma in their body, but also with any sort of mental health concern to find more balance. And she goes into that and explains it a lot better than I could in this episode. So I'm really excited to present that to you because I think that especially, you know, as psychotherapists in our field, we don't really know or hear a lot about yoga therapy, at least I didn't. So we're going to talk all about what that is and you'll get to meet Sarah, who is just an amazing human being and get to know her better. So let's go ahead and dig into the podcast. Like what the heck is yoga therapy? Mm -hmm. So let's Let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, let's get into it. Um, but before we get into that, let's talk about our first four questions. Mm-hmm. So I ask these questions to everybody when they come on my podcast. And uh, the first one is, what did you want to be when you were little and you were thinking about your future and what you wanted to be when you grew up? Uh, so I've always wanted to be a teacher. Mm-hmm. But when I was little, I wanted to be an elementary school teacher. Mm-hmm. And I quickly learned through my junior college and kind of getting involved with the schools that it wasn't my path, yeah. <laughs> the path that I was destined to take. So eventually I ended up going to business school, which was... I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I got my bachelor's degree in business at the yeah. University of Maryland, but it was, um, you know, just something. It didn't really call to me. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, why business, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah. Um, well, my husband is an active duty military, mm-hmm. and we were currently stationed at Germany in Germany at the time, so I needed to um, find something that I could complete my degree in over there mm-hmm. while I was working um, in uh, the school that they have there is University of Maryland University College. Okay. And so I thought uh, business was a good one for a military spouse because you move all the time and you need to be able to market yourself and make yourself valuable no matter where you are. Right. And so for me at the time, it was perfect. I was uh, actually an executive assistant at the USO, Hmm. and they ended up hiring me as an accountant because I was getting my business degree. (laughs) So uh, it was pretty cool, but I also learned that numbers weren't my thing either. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You kind of get that experience, and you're like, maybe this isn't. Exactly. Yeah. So people were my thing, and and, uh, I eventually ended up down the path of yoga and uh, becoming a yoga teacher and now a yoga therapist. That is so cool. And to think that I mean, at least in my brain, I feel like accounting is so different from the practice of yoga, Mm. Um, but that you have that versatility and that background, Mm -hmm. and you were able to do something that can be difficult, which is to say, like, you know, you tried something and then realized it wasn't for you, and you were able to pivot and listen to that part of you. Yeah, my whole life has been um, the... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the rise and fall of, like, figuring out where where my dharma is, where my path is. Yes, and pivots, I'm sure. Yes. Welcome to the club, homie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, welcome to humanity. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> At least for a lot of us. I mean, I won't say that everybody has quite as, or they don't always have as many pivots as some others, but um, I found that many of us have to pivot mm-hmm. at different points in our yeah, lives. So. It's good. It's part of the growth. It is. It totally is. Well, cool. Well, on to our second first four question. Um, What's been one of your worst or most learning moments in your yoga practice? So I kind of think my worst and best moments um, of yoga therapy are with the same client. Mm 
<laughs> and he was one of my first clients, actually. We started our relationship when he asked for my help after being rehabilitated from a plane crash. And the doctors told him he only had 5% chance of ever walking again. So he asked me for help, um, but told me he didn't want all of the yoga stuff. (laughs) Um, I wondered how I was going to teach yoga to someone who needed yoga but didn't want the yoga stuff. Right. Um, So I kind of had to think a little bit outside the box. Um, He had... He'd lost connection to his nerve endings and his feet, um, which caused him to be imbalanced, and he could only walk on his heels. Mm. He had a knee replacement, a hip replacement, um, a nearly completely fused spine, and he was missing parts of his abdominal organs from from his surgery. Wow. So um, I needed to find a way that would keep him challenged, uh, but also have him be able to see improvement so that he knew that it was working. And we worked in the studio, we worked at his house, um, and and then we got in the pool because he was less afraid of falling if we were in water, Mm -hmm. and he loved to be in the water. So um, I just kind of incorporated those things with him. And um, he made great strides in a short amount of time. Um, And the best part was that he was doing yoga, he just didn't know he was doing yoga. You were just not calling it yoga. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. So it was the most fulfilling experience for us both, and it led me to where I am today in yoga therapy. Mm. Um, And he was and still is the most positive and uplifting client I ever worked with. Mm. And he's now since made a nearly full recovery. And um, he was just kind of an inspiration to work with, a challenge, but an inspiration at the the same time. And and, uh, he was a true example of the power of the mind. How yeah. having the right mindset will help you get you through almost anything. Including a plane crash. Mm-hmm. Like, I just feel like, man, I, like when you just first described him, like the word that came into my brain was resilience. Yeah, absolute mm-hmm. resilience for sure. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. That's really neat. So it maybe even answered my, my third question, which is the best moment in mm-hmm. your yoga practice, but it sounds like the two were kind of intertwined, yes, which can absolutely. definitely be the case. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and now the fourth one's kind of a silly one, but I, I love to ask this one. What's your spirit animal? So I don't, I don't know how much I believe in spirit animals, but I have (laughs) taken little quizzes that they have online, uh, before, and it always comes up tiger. So I guess if I'm going to have an animal, a tiger seems like a really cool spirit animal to have. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's cool. So what are the traits that they kind of associate with the tiger? So same thing, like kind of power, determination, Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. strong-willed, kind of um, the fiery component, like getting things done. Yeah. And um, a military spouse especially has to have that strong-willed, independent kind of personality in order to do what we do. Yes, I can imagine that. I have a good friend that um, was a military spouse because her husband's now retired, but I think of what she's done as like a wife and as a mother, and I'm like, resilience is another word that comes up when I think of women who are partners to people in the army, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's definitely a special, um, kind of relationship and role like Mm -hmm. in our, in our culture. And so grateful for women like you (laughs) for sure. Um, now I think I'm going to go into the meat of it because even when I first met you, I, I mean, I feel like I've always thought that yoga and therapy needed to intertwine for multiple different reasons, but I didn't know that yoga therapy was a thing already that's being cultivated and practiced and there were certifications and it was practiced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think the question I have for you, because I'm I'm guessing that other therapists might have been in my position as well, thinking like, you know, what in the world is yoga therapy? Mm -hmm. Tell us more about what that is. Yeah, absolutely. Um. So yoga therapy is a a fairly new modality. Um, There are only a little over 3,000 of us in in the world right now that are certified. Um, Most of them are grandfathered into um, the older version of yoga therapy. Mm -hmm. And so now us new people coming in, there's an actual certified program in which um, we attend 
about a thousand hours of school in order yeah. to achieve the certification. So it ends up being like um, a bachelor's degree or, or more by the time we end up with it. But it's um, which I think I don't know that everybody quite understands the um, like the dedication and time yeah. and effort you put into that. So I want to like emphasize that that is a lot of training mm-hmm. and it's amazing. So it's definitely not just like some, you don't take it helter skelter and call right. yourself a yoga therapist. You literally train and have experience and supervision and yes. work in that practice for so long before you're certified. Yeah, most definitely more than just a weekend yoga trainer course or even a 200 hour uh, registered yoga teacher certification for sure. Right. Um, So what yoga therapy is, is that it's a unique model that assesses clients from a holistic perspective rather than considering each body part or system separately like our uh, our medical model does. And uh, it's a system of treating the individual and not the disease. And the yoga therapist will empower the client to reach specific goals and needs despite whatever their limitations are. Mm-hmm. using the philosophy and teachings of yoga. That's awesome. So could you kind of give us like a little bit of an example of what that would look like in like a client you've worked with or like a like kind of a case where it's like, okay, this is what they were struggling with and this is how we kind of incorporated holistic yoga therapy to help that. Yeah, so often what happens is um, because we're looking at the client from a holistic perspective, um, when they come in to see us, we we have given them an intake form. They filled out a lot of preliminary questions for us so that we can kind of evaluate them before they even get into our office. And then when they come to see us, it's kind of a um, it may be a maybe a physical assessment based on the answers they've given us. It mm-hmm. may be um, we inquire on more questions um, based on the answers. And a lot of the times, um, what we find is that that people have several things going on at one time. Mm. And so by looking at them from a spiritual, intellectual, physical, energetic perspective from all of those areas, we can kind of um, put together a plan for that individual person that's going to fit their needs. Um, And same as, as with the client I described earlier who was in the plane crash, he didn't want yoga, but you can kind of go into, um, a door that's comfortable to him. Mm -hmm. So yoga wasn't what he wanted to hear. I wasn't going to speak Sanskrit to him and I wasn't (laughs) going to tell him that he was doing this posture or that posture. We were just looking at the body and assessing maybe some emotional issues that he had attached to with his ability to move or not move or breathe in a particular way. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's why it's, it's such a neat practice and that it's very individualized And uh, a lot of the times that we get together with that client, we find that their physical body is is taking on some sort of physical pain um, that's usually tied to something emotional. Mm -hmm. And so addressing the emotional at the same time, which a lot of the time doesn't happen in a doctor's office. Right. And even, you know, as a therapist, you know, I think our journey and like what we really are working towards in our field at this point is that oftentimes we can work a lot with people's um, emotions from a very cerebral context where we're working from our brains are kind of communicating to their prefrontal cortex as well. But what a lot of therapists and myself included, like I'm still growing and learning in ways that I can figure out how to do this or bridge the gap so I can get people into a space where they're working with people like you is figuring out how we help them really heal what's stored in their bodies Mm -hmm. as physical pain, as anxiety in their gut, as, you know, anger in their chest, you know, those different things where, you know, I know I'm logically, I'm working with a client and logically they can know the things that they need to know and tell their brains a logical message, but their body is still storing or, you know, emitting a different type of message than what their brain is telling them. Mm -hmm. And they have that disconnect. And I think, you know, and I'll be the first to say that that's been moments in therapy that, I'm like, well, crap, I don't know what to do right now because you are a smart, intelligent human being who's worked through the prefrontal cortex part of this, but your body mm-hmm. it doesn't believe it. You know, mm-hmm. the, the like your brain hasn't made that 13-inch drop into your heart. And mm-hmm. then the further drop into your gut, 
you know, to really fully embody the therapy process. And I say that because I want to be vulnerable and and say, you know, there are times in therapy, I don't know where to go Mm -hmm. from there. And that's where I feel the incredible importance of getting people into, you know, a yoga practice that is intentional and working on those things, right? Because you could definitely do yoga that doesn't, that's great for other reasons, but isn't directly targeting that. Mm -hmm. Um, And other just body practices that heal, the emotional parts that are stored in our bodies that therapists aren't typically trained to heal unless they do something with, you know, somatic experiencing or EMDR or that sort of thing. But, yeah. you know, that's not all of us for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And even then, sometimes, you know, I've found in my own journey, yoga was very helpful in healing what was stored in my own body mm-hmm. um, when I was definitely not originally like a meditative yoga type of person, which I think is also important to say, like you mentioned about your um, client, even just being averse to the word yoga, mm-hmm. right? Like that's, I'm sure that's something you see commonly. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, they also call, yoga therapists will call themselves functional movement specialists, mm-hmm. movement specialists, mm-hmm. um, wellness specialists. They change the title all the time to fit whoever they're talking to. Because honestly, yoga does have this this bad um, idea behind it sometimes, or that it's religious, or that it's um, something that, of course, our society's made it out to be, which is this complicated stuff where only skinny, fit people in you know tight yoga pants are doing mm-hmm. you know headstands and complicated poses <laughs> and turning themselves into pretzels, and that's really not what yoga is about, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you're right. There is that stigma still for some reason that it is skinny, Caucasian, Mm -hmm. you know, affluent um, or not even affluent, but like wealthy, I think has Mm -hmm. that with the Lululemon kind of connotation where, again, I'm not trying to rip on Lululemon, but they did kind of bring this whole like, you know, Mm -hmm. a different kind of wealth perspective into it, too, that I think is actually, you know, yeah, it's just taken away from what yoga truly is. Well, and a lot of people want to think that yoga is just physical postures, mm. and it's so much more than that. It it doesn't have to be this hot asana class where you go in and you get your one-hour workout and you feel all sweaty and uh, exercised by the time you're finished with it, but rather um, this real deep inquiry in yourself and figuring out, like, what's going on? What's lacking in my life? Mm. What is... What's going on in my mind that I need to correct? And maybe it's habitual patterns. Maybe it's um, maybe it's something we saw in our parents when we were being raised. It can be a whole slew of things. It could be what society is telling us. Mm. And um, it's the ability to turn inward and, and use maybe, you know, postures and things like that to get through it. But um, it's so much more than just physical movement. Mm-hmm. Well, and, you know, obviously, anecdotally, I'm not you know, trying to make it about just my experience, but I like to speak to it because I did not like naturally come to yoga or like meditation or mindful body practices. Like Mm -hmm. I was very resistant to it. And my brain was too, because I have a very naturally busy brain. And again, that's, you know, systemic of my own trauma history and how I, you know, have adapted and, um, what was once very functional and helpful for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I finally was able to kind of experience it in different ways and slowly absorb the different parts of it, you know, the practice itself was not about, like you said, the physical postures. It was about learning how to breathe mm-hmm. in a way that wasn't and like calming down my nervous system in ways that I'd never been able to do before. And um, I think if you'd said like you have to like sit with your thoughts or something, like I'd been like, oh crap, I am not, mm-hmm. I'm totally not doing that, right? But it, it does, I think, give people a different perspective where, in my experience, I'm able to go more inward and have a different type of relationship to my body and to like my sense of being. Okay, that totally sounds woo. So, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to explain this in a way that like my. 17 year old self would have been able to get on board with but you know again it's a little hard sometimes to get there um but I think yeah like to just have a different way of viewing my experience and that in and of itself helped me get to the space where I could finally like you said be with my thoughts and 
learn how to regulate my body and my nervous system and work through Mm -hmm. some of the emotional stuff that, you know, at the get go, if someone said, Hey, you're going to like be with your thoughts and Mm -hmm. (laughs) sit and meditate. I would have been like, sounds great. I'm going to go for a run. Like, you know, that, that just wouldn't have resonated to me, you know, 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. And really that's the difference between yoga therapy and a yoga class is that in a yoga class, your teacher's uh, has less education most likely, but she's also he or she is also going to be treating a class as a whole. So she's got all different kinds of bodies coming in there. She's got all different kinds of abilities um, and and all kinds of people in different places in their life that have had different experiences. Mm-hmm. She's she, teaching you a generalized practice, whereas yoga therapy is an individualized. Um, or a small group class where everybody is coming for the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, For example, yoga for recovery. And so um, this individualized approach is really important because I can look at uh, all the aspects that you have going on in your life, and I can arrange my class to fit your needs. And as you grow and change then I can keep adjusting where you're going with this, with this therapy practice. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you're, you're more likely to achieve results quicker yes. and, um, and actually make some life-changing practice out of it where you can take it off your mat and into what you're doing every day. Yeah. No, and that's powerful. Mm-hmm. I don't think enough people realize the importance of that because when they – I'm guessing when they think of yoga, they think of a class, Mm -hmm. but I would, I would guess that just like, you know, somebody could read a really great therapy book or go to a seminar, that's not going to be the same kind of life changing deep work Mm -hmm. that they would, I mean, it will help in certain ways, but it won't, it probably life changing deep personalized work, like being in a unique therapy relationship would be Mm -hmm. just like, you know, a yoga class. That's that has benefits, but it's not going to do that life changing deep work that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Personalized work too. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> it's good stuff. Cool. Well, what are some of the misconceptions about yoga therapy? I know we've covered a couple, I'm sure, already, but what are some that come up for you that you want to make sure people know or not? You yeah, know? so as I said, um, <laughs> the biggest misconception is that people picture yoga as this purely physical practice um, with poses that are complicated, difficult, and maybe even impossible for, for most <laughs> Westerners. Um, and while yoga class has its benefits and people go because they feel better after a yoga class, yoga therapy is tailored, like I said, to the individual person. And, um, and it offers something for all ages, all body types, all flexibilities, um, all experiences. So, um, no matter what condition you're coming to me with, we can tailor that class specifically to your needs and your conditions. And then, um, the best part is that you don't have to know anything about yoga to start seeing a yoga therapist. I know some people go into a yoga class and they, they're like, oh, man, I needed a beginner's class or I needed chair yoga or something. Mm-hmm. But in a yoga therapy class, no matter what you have going on, you could know nothing about yoga and you could still see a yoga therapist and, and see an, an immense amount of results within a short period of time. Yeah. No, that's a really important point because even for myself, like, you know, I – If a client were to ask me, like, oh, do I need to, like, have experience with yoga? I don't know that I would know that off the bat, like, Mm -hmm. for sure, you know, that they could Mm -hmm. go into yoga therapy one-on-one without any prior experience. So that's very helpful to know. Well, and just like in the the client that was in the plane crash, I mean, he had that idea that yoga was something he was not interested in, but he wanted somebody to help him. And so it it can definitely be approached in a way that meets your needs. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're concerned about yoga being a religion or that it's going to affect your spirituality in some way, then, then we approach it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll approach it through postures or through breath work or even, you know, guided meditation of some sort. However, that client comes to me and says, this is, this is my belief system. This is what I need or what I think I need. Then we start there. 
mm-hmm. and and gradually, you know, adjust it and adapt it to how they grow with the practice. Yeah, no, that's great. And I, you know, I wouldn't think about the religious part of it, but I'm sure some people do, mm-hmm. especially, um, you know, even though I've seen that people might be able to experience like their, the, like in my practice as well with people in therapy, I try to integrate and meet them where they're at with their spirituality. I'm sure that's probably mm-hmm. something you could do too if they yes. wanted that. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because it is a very important um, component for people when they are yeah. doing that deep work. Yeah, when you're looking at a person from a holistic perspective, spirituality is definitely one of those components for sure. Yes, I would totally, totally agree. And are there different types of yoga therapy for different mental health issues? Or tell us more about how that works and what it looks like, if you can. I mean, I know it's kind of verbally difficult to describe, but... Yeah, so again, the beauty of yoga therapy is that it's individualized. So um, I would first start by looking at the person um, to see if they're more of an actively stressed and anxious type. So in yoga, we call that rajasic. Um, or if they're more of a depressed um, and lethargic type. Mm. And um, that would be called tamasic in uh, yoga. And we would approach those two things very differently because they're in two different states, essentially. And um, our whole goal with yoga therapy is to find balance, which is called sattva. And, um, And so the way that we would approach those two different perspectives is very, very different. Yeah, because you're trying to kind of bring them into the equilibrium of, you know, another space, right? Yeah, and so Yeah, I could definitely see that. And that's really, I mean, I I don't know as much, well, I don't know nearly as much about, you know, the different, I know we've talked about, like, Pitta, Vata, Mm -hmm. all that different stuff. Yep, Ayurveda, and I, but I am, like, I, it was funny, there was a moment in my life that I did utilize some of the Ayurvedic herbal, Mm -hmm. like, medicines for my own healing, um, and found that it was very helpful. So, I mean, I'm definitely a believer, even though I don't know enough about it to speak to it, Um, but, yeah, that's really neat that that's also incorporated Mm -hmm. into it, and I think... I think you're right. Like, I think a lot of people, when they hear, like, certain words or in a different language, it can be a little scary. Yeah. So if they're not open to that, those words don't even come up, of course. Um, <laughs> you're like, not even yeah. going to talk about that. <laughs> or if they're interested in it, of course, then we start to teach them those aspects. But it's really unimportant because right. um, we're still doing the work. We're just not talking about it in in the Eastern tradition. Mm-hmm. And, um, and Ayurveda is a huge part of yoga therapy. Though our clients may not exactly know that that's what we're doing with them. Right. Um, But it's a way that we identify uh, what state that they're in so that we know what kind of yoga practice to give them. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's like a, it's a word, right? That just kind of has meaning to it. Mm -hmm. And then if it's, you know, scary, I just imagine that you use the words that are less scary that also hold that meaning. Um, Just like if someone sense. is more of a, like, sci- they have a scientific-based approach. So you can tell they're very, they want the details and, and how it works in science. And, of course, then you give them that. You give them, you know, statistics and um, studies. Mm-hmm. And you tell them all of the body parts, you know, <laughs> in their their full form, you know, instead of, um, you know, the body parts that we know them as or that we're taught as as kids or even teenagers. Um, so again, it's all about meeting them where they're at and going in that door that they're willing to accept it from. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Just like I was working with a client the other day and, um, their anxiety manifest as anger, but it's really built in from, I, I, I tie anxiety to a lot of things Mm -hmm. and the ways that people react, but when I was framing it as anxiety, they were not connecting to that. So it was like, it was funny. I was like, all right, I've got to really meet them where they're at and yeah. use that language. Because if I try to get into my therapist jargon and use my language, like mm-hmm. I miss people. And so I have to, I also have to be very careful about how I frame things so that I'm also meeting my clients where they're at. Yeah. So it's cool. There's a lot of overlap in mm-hmm. how we do stuff. So that is like, I think that's like a, an ultimate takeaway I want hopefully people to understand is, you know, you guys are really getting some really good training and working to really be with people so that hopefully other therapists can trust you with working with people when it comes to 
the body parts of where they're stuck in their emotional journey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. And then the last question I have for you in regards to yoga therapy is how long does yoga therapy typically take to see results or healing? Because I know I get that question about therapy therapy all the time, so I'm just going to throw that out there, even though I'm sure it probably differs person to person. Um, And do you see that people have to practice with you for life, or how does that – do they practice for life? How does it look like as like a journey of healing for people typically? Yeah, so – uh, the answer to all questions in yoga therapy like this are, it depends. <laughs> uh, no two people are the same, of course, and therefore no two treatments will be the same. Right. Um, yoga means uniting body and mind, and to me, life is yoga. Mm. So it's being present in every moment, whether it's good or bad, and yoga is the journey to relieve our suffering. And of course, to be human is to suffer. So each person's journey through life is unique and individual, so it's hard to know how quickly one is going to achieve results at any given time. It's true. But in my experience, the more you practice the techniques and use the tools provided in your sessions, the greater and quicker the result. And I feel like once you make yoga a part of your life, um, you won't want to stop practicing Mm because you'll feel good. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll want to embody that new way of living yeah no that makes sense and I don't think that it'd be like like I imagine like you said earlier yoga becomes integrated into other things that you do in your life so it's not always looking like being on the mat with a you know yoga therapist or yoga teacher exactly but it's incorporated in a lot of other ways too yeah for certain um I mean, ideally, when a client comes to us, we want to empower them and give them the skills that they need so that they go into their life and they live it fully and completely uh, without our help. Yeah. Um, So if you're actually doing your job, then I think it's it's something they should be able to pick up and go, okay, these tools are going to help me when when I'm having a difficult time. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be able to go back to those on my own, and mm-hmm. I'm going to be able to to take care of business on my own, and it's going to be okay. Yes, and that's that's our ultimate goal, you know. Um, and all of yoga, like I said, is life. Um, so, you know, you're doing yoga when you're being present while you're chopping vegetables for dinner, and you know when you're creating something with your hands. Um, all of that is yoga if you're if you're present for it. Mm-hmm. So you're using the skills and the the ways of being from it, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And that totally makes sense. That's awesome. Well, let's wrap this up in our last four. Um, these are, what is a, well, these are kind of fun in my opinion as well, like the, like the first four. But um, what is the one thing you wish you knew when you first started your yoga practice? Well, um, or what I, is one thing that you wish you knew? I think, I think I always have wished that I had known this stuff as a kid. Um, I think I would have handled my stress and anxiety through my teen years especially uh, better and even into adulthood as a young military spouse. Mm. Um, The reason I came to yoga is because I had been under so much stress for so many years that I I no longer knew how to cope with it or if I ever knew how to cope with it correctly. And and so I started seeing it show up in my physical body. And so that was – yoga was a lifesaver for me and – and those techniques and tools, if I had them as a child, I wouldn't probably have had so much difficulty through adulthood. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think um, now I get the joy of teaching my son and my family and my friends and my community. And and so, um, you know, it all happened in the order that it was supposed to happen for me. But um, I'm proud that I can do that for other people now and teach them. Yeah, no, that's great. I think, you know, when you were saying that, I was like, amen, I wish I knew that as a kid too, you know, (laughs) and uh, uh, yeah, but that's amazing that you're able to spread that gift now to other people Mm -hmm. and even to your own son, like that's such a, that's so special. It is. (laughs) That's so cool. Um, And what is the one, a really good yoga therapy related book for people, whether they're yoga practitioners or therapists or just people? Yeah, so um, I loved the book called Waking by Matthew Sanford. Hmm. Um, 
it's an inspirational book about trauma and his healing through um, the process with yoga. And he's actually a yoga teacher, maybe even a yoga therapist under the old um, grandfathered rules. But he, um, he tells an incredible story of his process um, through he- healing after being in a tragic accident. That's so cool. I haven't heard of that one yet, yeah. um, but I'm definitely always like on the prowl for another yeah. drama it's book really to good. read. So that's really neat. So cool. So Waking by, what's his name again? Matthew Sanford. Matthew Sanford. Mm-hmm. Awesome. That's awesome. And especially I think a lot of people are not making the yoga slash trauma connection. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think anything that can help people understand that is yeah, great. Yeah, the connection is huge. And he, he does a great job of um, telling you a story that you you just don't want to put it down. No, and that's a, that's incredible too because I'm always just thinking of um, I think of Bessel van der Kolk's book, and mm-hmm. he's an amazing human with like amazing research. But um, I think one area he's lacking is sometimes he misses the general population because yeah. he tends too to be scientific. so cognitive, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, that he can miss people because he doesn't tell it through story. He tells it through more facts where he'll he'll filter in stories. So I do give him credit for that, but. Um, it's definitely not like a page turner for Mm -hmm. people who are not already on board with those concepts. Right. Yeah. That's great. And then what is a quote that you really like has resonated with you or is a favorite quote of yours? Or even sometimes I ask people, you know, what is, what's been resonating for you in general lately? Yeah. So I've had a quote since before I knew I was going to be a yoga therapist. I think I got it in my first, um, It was introduced to me in my first 200-hour training in 2014, and I think it still stands true today, and I say it at the end of my classes sometimes, Um, but it's practice makes permanent. What we practice is who we become. Mm, I like that. And I mean, it's so true if you think about, um, you know, the years I spent talking negatively to myself Mm. and talking down on myself that I wasn't good enough, um... And I think that when we tell each other, tell ourselves these things all the time, we start to believe it's true. Mm-hmm. And it's absolutely not true. Right. And so we become that negative, you know, doubtful person. Um, but if we practice things like yoga and we practice recognizing when we're beating ourselves up over nothing, then um, we start to make those things more permanent. We start to say, nope, I am good enough. And, you know, this is okay. It's okay that I feel this way. Tomorrow's going to be better. If we continue to talk to each other, to ourselves that way, and to each other that way, then um, we become that. We become better. We become become more confident. Yes. Become more positive. Yes. And we need more people like that. For sure. For sure. And I, I mean, I see that a lot. In the practice that I have with a lot of, because a lot of my clients struggle with Mm -hmm. self doubt. And I think it's a, it's unfortunately more of a human thing to do is to kind of default to that um, doubt thinking about ourselves and to be hard on ourselves. And again, I think it once served a protective purpose, but no longer serves that. And in fact, like you said, you know, we could talk about the science behind this, but yeah, we have the attribution bias over time that we like to prove ourselves right Mm -hmm. about those false beliefs, even when we're very wrong. Mm -hmm. And so we'll live our lives in accordance to those false beliefs, even though, like you said, that's really not who we are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's really cool. That's powerful. And my last question is what's the one question I didn't ask that might be important to getting to know you better or yoga therapy, you know, what did I miss? Um, Well, I truly believe that we all have the power within us to heal whatever ails us. Sometimes we just need someone on the outside, uh, the outside of our pain, whether it's physical or emotional, to guide us back onto the path of empowerment and healing. Mm. And I may not be able to cure a client of their disease, but I can help them heal. So my one own personal goal is to help my clients live life more fully and more joyfully. Yeah. And that is healing in its own right, right? Mm -hmm. That is healing. 
Cool. Thank you for letting me pick your brain this Monday afternoon. Thanks I know I'll probably me. post this on a on a Saturday or a Sunday, but um, but yeah, thank you for for being with me and for sharing that because you've taught me already like what this is and and helped me kind of see a different side of of yoga. And I'm really excited that it's already in this space for I mean at least three thousand people, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I would love for it to be more, but. I'm so grateful that it's already in that space and that this is a new thing that we get to kind of educate people about. Um, And hopefully, my hope is, and I wonder if you have this hope too, or, you know, maybe even it's a fear at the same time, is that we can communicate it in words that resonate and that people understand, you know, where those people that are averse to, you know, yoga Mm -hmm. can somehow have that bridge gap to where they're open to all the healing that they just don't realize it's so important for them if they were to kind of, you know, take away their preconceptions about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a struggle that we'll deal with for a while as the the modality continues to grow. Um, and also proving ourselves in the medical field that, you know, we're, we are a worthy component to any medical condition, um, and in a way that kind of thinks outside the box. I mean, we're able to look at somebody and spend time with somebody in a way that a medical doctor can't. Right. And so um, working alongside them is going to be really important as we go into the future. Yes. So my hope is that eventually we'll be able to speak our, our truth and tell people who we are and what we do and how it's going to help yes. in the long run to bring ultimate healing to people um, no matter what the condition. Yes. And politically, you know, hopefully have the funding to get those. I mean, we have some research for sure that's already showing the evidence to this. But um, unfortunately, there can be politics at times to what gets funded. And my hope is that there's more funding for this so that empirically we can speak to doctors. Because unfortunately, I think that's their language. It's like they're like, we want to see the data. Yeah, scientific Um, studies and research. And it's happening uh, in yoga itself. Yes, um, yoga therapy. Maybe because not. you can you can do um, different styles of yoga and run research on it and have statistics to give out. But with yoga therapy, yoga therapy being so individualized and unique to each person, mm. it's not like a prescription. I'm not going to write the same prescription to every person that has low back pain right. because they're going to tell me things that are going to affect how I treat them. Yeah. And so one person with low back pain is going to look completely different than another with low back pain based on what's going on in the rest of their life, emotionally, you know, spiritually, physically, everything. So it's hard to run our research and (laughs) science study (laughs) on, um, on that kind of thing because it's unique, you know? Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So we're going to have to work together somehow to figure that out, you know, that yoga does have its benefits and that they have the studies behind them. But um, yoga therapy is just something else. It's completely different. Yes, and unique. And so it may be more of a N equals one type of experiment Mm -hmm. that over time people experientially understand better. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you again. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Until next time. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this podcast and learning more about yoga therapy. I just wanted to briefly shout out to Soma Recovery and let you guys know that we are a holistic therapy center that provides psychotherapy, physical therapy, nutrition therapy, and we treat people as a whole. We also don't just talk about trauma, we actually treat it and have treatments that work on the body parts of trauma and helping people heal wherever they are, whether they are recovering from something very, what people would identify as very traumatic, or if it's just about healing the way that they are in relationships or the way they perceive the world or themselves. If you want to get more information, you can find us online at somawichita.com. And I'm always happy to connect with people if you ever just want to connect and give feedback on the podcast or connect with our services and some of the trainings that we provide. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.